Hey everybody, it's Decap here, and in this video we're going to be talking about subzones in World of Warcraft and some issues that people have found with them and are currently having with them. So uh, in the background footage you're going to see the Forbidden Reach. This was a kind of an unexpected zone added uh, at the end of 10.0, so 10.0.7 or something like that. And this was kind of just added in and people were like, whoa, this is kind of crazy that we have a zone randomly added in at the end of a patch. And it ends up being this fairly large, really well-developed zone. And there's a decent amount of stuff to do there, but of course it's mostly a rare farm. Um, so like the issue is, the issue people are having with this one specifically is, people still want to do some of the stuff there, complete it or whatever, but nobody's there because there's no current content to really do there. And so to actually complete it, you have to find a community or, you know, advertise in trade chat or something like you need, you're looking for other people to do this with you. Um, obviously the easier way is to find a community that does this kind of stuff, but, uh, it's, it's very difficult and it's not a very soloable thing to do. And a lot of like completionist and achievement stuff is kind of like solo content. And so this, this causes a big issue, of course. Now, uh, I've also seen people kind of, you know, bringing up an issue with Zillair uh, Caverns, the 10.1 zone. And that's because, uh, for the similar reasons, uh, the, the content is still current, but there's not a huge reason to be down there for majority of the player base right now. And so, the, again, to kill the rare spawns and stuff like that is very difficult, especially, especially if you're not very geared. And especially if you're, you know, you're by yourself, literally by yourself, you might not be able to even kill it. And some of them you can't even kill if you are very geared, uh, or you can, or it's just, and it's just really hard um, to do. And it's, you know, maybe not worth, the juice might not be worth the squeeze in that case. And I think these are very valid issues that we bring up, and it, it comes to a larger point, in my opinion. And I think that we need to differentiate between, like, good subzones and bad subzones. And subzones are just zones that are added on top of the base expansion, right? And so I, I think we could we could point to some ones that are pretty bad. I think, uh, for example, I think the uh, Corthia. <laughs> the name escapes me because it's so bad. Corthia is one that was pretty bad. Now there there were a couple cool things in Corthia. I'm not gonna say there's not. I really liked finding like that mount or whatever that horse that was hidden and you had to find it a certain amount of times and then you got it as a mount. I thought that was pretty cool and I thought there was some cool things there. But Corthia is very forgettable. No one's ever gonna go back to Corthia. Nobody wants to go back to Corthia. This was not a good subzone. Now I know they <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on in Blizzard at the time. I'm not blaming the devs or whatever for that zone in particular. But obviously that was a bad subzone. I think despite how beautiful it is and despite how good it is, I think Forbidden Reach is going to go down as a bad subzone. Again, because it's just like nobody got to really complete it. Nobody got to really spend time there. Um, when I look back at Dragonfly, I, I mean, I spent so many hours in the Waking Shores and all the main zones while they're flying through them to do world quests or going to the events like Dragon's Van Keep or Soup and stuff like that. All the hunts that I did, you know, finding treasures, mining. Uh, I've done a lot of mining. Uh, and I don't, and I just did not spend very much time in Forbidden Reach. Uh, I've gone back a couple times. Uh, I wanted to finish something in the in the Zascara vaults, and I went back and I got enough keys to do what I needed to do. But it was really a pain in the butt to solo all those rares and get the keys and stuff like that. And it's like not something that I really want to do because it was such a pain in the butt. So I haven't even looked because I didn't want to like get sad if there was like a cool title or reward for completing stuff there. Cause I don't really want to go back. Now there also is the, is the case where maybe we're looking at it wrong as a player base in that it's, it's like a sub zone. It's not supposed to be like forbidden reach is part of the waking shores kind of thing. And it's like, it's just kind of part of that, you know, it's off to the side of it. It's part of the waking shores. But then if you're going to put all these big achievements and stuff there, it kind of, and like this other, and like literally the scare of vaults is like a whole thing of content uh, that we're probably never going to revisit. And, and it's like, man, it's just, it's just a little bit sad. I think a lot of players who play these types of games want the, want the content to kind of be evergreen in some way. Like it doesn't have to be evergreen that we're, oh, we're going to do this as a of vaults for the rest of World of Warcraft's history. We're always going to do the scare of vaults. We're always going to do tour gas. Um, I don't think that that's the case. I think it's just having some sort of evergreenness to it is really, really nice. And, you know, we can think of more. I'm sure we could think of more and more bad subzones. In my opinion, I didn't like a lot of the Pandaria stuff. I know um, the one Pandaria zone is one of the most favored one ever, and that one, the Timeless Isle, I believe, 
and I, and that one was pretty good. Uh, but a lot of the sub, there's too many subs on the Miss Pandaria, in my opinion. Um, and like, <laughs> I can tell you as someone who was extremely casual and then just quit during Miss Pandaria, like after a month in, I was just like, this is too much. Um, like t- the even thought of going back to those, all those sub zones and doing their stuff is completely overwhelming and I'll never do it. Uh, I thought there were way too many sub zones in Mr. Pandaria. So uh, we, l- let's talk about some good sub zones so we can kind of uh, figure out the difference here, right? In my opinion, um, there's three sub zones that people have all pretty much liked. Uh, and there's probably more than that, but three recent ones. And that is. Uh, Mechagon Isle, or whatever it's called, where the Mechagnomes are. Uh, Nazjatar, so two in the same patch, basically. And then Xerath Mortis, I think, was completely, you know, liked by everybody. And I think there's reasons why. There is evergreen content there, first of all. Uh, and it's and it's evergreen content that is actually doable. Like, you, it's not like, oh, I have to go find a community to do this. I have to, like, go to Discord or Reddit to find, find a community to do this. Um... With, with Mechagon, you have the rare spawns that dropped mounts, very low percent drop chance mounts. And so you'd have people just there doing it. There's tons of people there. Uh, I don't know if there still is, but there might be. <laughs> there Like there was in Shadowlands still. Uh, still tons of people there farming the mounts and stuff like that. And and most of the stuff is, and it's soloable because there's already people there. You don't even have to find a group for it. And so everything there is like soloable to do, which is pretty cool. That's like evergreen content. I could go to Mechagon and you know, chip away at the stuff that I haven't done there and feel fine about it. Nazjatar is very similar. I, I've done most of the Nazjatar stuff. I don't quite have like the meta achievement, I don't think. Um, and I'm not, I'm not a huge completionist myself, but I, I, uh, I, I've done most of the Nazjatar stuff and most of it was soloable and it was very enjoyable. There's a lot of cool stuff in Nazjatar. Uh, and so, and then as far as Earth Mortis goes, I think the thing was there with the being able to craft the mounts and the pets and stuff like that. I think that was a really cool system, and so and it was also mostly a soloable system, uh, and so I could see myself. I, I got a lot of the protoform th- synthesis mounts, uh, but there's definitely a few that I don't have. So I could see myself, eh, like if I was like short of a mount achievement or something like that. Again, I'm not a completionist, so I don't have all the mount achievements. Um, if I was just barely short, I could see myself going there and farming out protoform synthesis mounts because I can do it solo, and it's not that big of a deal, and it's kind of a cool system. And so what I think we see with these good sub zones there, you can return to them to complete them and you can do it solo and it's not a pain in the butt. And I think that is kind of what makes a good sub zone in World of Warcraft. Now it being beautiful, like Forbidden Reach is, is, is a bonus as well. It having a cool thing in it, like Zaskara Volts, which Zaskara Volts is very cool. Having that in it is also a bonus, right? And, um, Imagine if you could go farm the Scare Vaults, for example, um, but you, like, getting the keys was just much easier now, for example, right? Imagine if the rare spawns weren't that bad, or there's a different way to get keys. So you could kill mobs, and then you could turn stuff in and buy keys with, like, residue that they drop or whatever. <laughs> um, imagine if it was, like, easier to get keys. Like, more people would go and do it then, because then they could at least finish the, the Scare Vaults achievement, and then, you know, if there was, like, rare spawns that they needed to kill for achievements, that would be harder. But at least it would be less hard. And, of course, you could also make the rare spawns, you know, get weaker over time <laughs> as well, uh, allowing for those solo players to have a little bit better experience. Or, you know, you could have less rare spawns and have them be, uh, have certain ones of them spawn, or have certain ones spawn less likely, but they can drop, like, a mount, and that way people are just there naturally to try to farm that mount. Of course, the mount has to be at least fairly cool for that to happen usually. But, you know, that's that's another thing you can look at it. And so uh, I think that's kind of the issue we're having here is these subzones are kind of hit or miss on that. I think if they just take whatever approach that they were taking for Mechagon and Azjatar, that was probably like a really good approach to take. I think Xerath Mortis then, what Xerath Mortis is they took player power out of it completely. There wasn't a ton of player power in Mechagon, but there was in Azjatar because you could get those... Uh, that gear or whatever that the benthic gear uh, so that there was player power there but there wasn't uh, much player 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 power in mechagon anyways and then of course they took player power out of Zareth mortis which was kind of like their new style and i think that's fine uh, but taking the player power out is going to remove the top end community the people that are going to kill those rare spawns really fast for you uh, those people aren't going to be there 
uh, when you take that out. So I think that's something that they need to kind of look at going forward. And I think all in all, I think everything can kind of be great with it. Um, Zalert, uh, Zalert Caverns, again, I think that's going to be a very forgettable zone. There's not like a ton of interesting things to do there. Uh, it's not a ton of soloable, like super soloable content to go back and farm or anything like that. And so I don't think that's going to be the best. I do think they should overall move away from just farming these rares. Oh, there's a million rare spawns everywhere. I liked the event setup of Zalert Caverns. I actually don't mind doing the events either still uh, while I'm down there. I don't mind doing the events. Uh, and I like that there's just lots to do, but again, it becomes harder and harder when there's less people. So I think that needs to be taken into account when it's kind of designed is that at some point there's going to be a lot less people doing this, um, just because of the way content cycles work. Other games come out, Diablo four comes out, for example, other games are going to come out. People are going to try those games out. Um, you know, while, while patches are very popping off at the first month or so of them, but then it's going to drop off. It's, it's just the way it is with all games, you know. Uh, you wait for new content to come out. You wait for this to come out. New content comes out in other games, so you go play that game. And that's just kind of the way it works. And I think that they maybe they need to incorporate that into their design a little bit. And, yeah, overall, though, I, I you know, I like Zalaric Caverns. I like Forbidden Reach. I wish they were a little bit more soloable. The best thing with Zalaric Caverns, by the way, is probably the Mimrit thing, the Sniff and Sneaking. You know, that was a really cool thing. That's very soloable content. So if I didn't, I wish there was more of it because that was a soloable content, right? I already finished all that. But that's something that you could go back and do later on by yourself, right? So I think that's I think that's where they should go with it. Uh, stuff that you can go back and do by yourself, either because there's a thousand other people there trying to get them out, <laughs> like in Mechagon, or because the stuff is just soloable to do on your own uh, and you don't even need any help. So I think that's where they should go with it. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the subzones. Too many subzones. I, I know most people are going to say just get rid of the rares, all the 10,000 rare spawns. Uh, I kind of agree with that, like I said. But uh, let me know your thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, as always, I ask you to please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And other than that, everybody, have a good one.